Well, hello, my friend. <laughs> this is a day of celebration and you get to join with me and my wife. Today is day number 731 for the Friend of Clyde project. Yes, on the 6th of October 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, I felt led of God to send out an audio message that day. Back then, I hardly knew what I was doing, and I certainly did not see myself going beyond the first day. But you know something? Since then, God has given me the grace to carry out this assignment every day, and I say, to God be the glory. It has been exciting. I have recorded from busy airports, from different cities, from different countries. I have recorded with roosters crowing in the background, dogs barking. I've recorded from hotel rooms and from hotel bathrooms. But God has allowed me to say every day without fail, Hello, my friend, this is Clyde, and to speak a message that he, God, gives me and to share it with you. Thank you, my friend, for participating in this wonderful project simply by listening. I don't profess to be an expert. Each message I receive from God and I share it with you. So on this day of celebration, I recommit myself to continue saying each day, Hello, my friend, this is Clyde, and to speak a word from the Lord to you. I trust you will continue to partner with me in this project. This coming year, as the Lord allows, I'm hoping to take it to an even higher level because I believe God wants us to do this. I have a YouTube channel, Friend of Clyde, with some of the episodes on it, and you can find us on podcast. <laughs> My friend, God bless you, and thanks for your support and encouragement. Thanks to my wife, Pat, for her amazing support. She's the wind beneath my wings. Thanks to God for giving me this project, and I continue to listen to him. God is awesome, and you are my friend. Well, for today's message. Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. The name Jesus is power. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11 says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May we just spend some time talking about the name of Jesus? I mean the powerful name of Jesus, the precious name of Jesus. Right out of the gate, I want to say that the name of Jesus is a mighty weapon. Hmm. The Bible says that God has given us spiritual weapons to engage in uh, this ongoing guerrilla warfare with Satan and his militant demons. So why do I say that the name of Jesus is a weapon? Well, it is right there in the text. And that's what we're going to be talking about. For a long time, I used to think that we will have to wait until the day of judgment for every knee to bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. I used to think that all of humanity will gather in this large open space, billions and billions of human beings, and an angel is simply going to speak the name of Jesus, and then everybody is going to bow the knees, except I was sure that some people would do it immediately while some stubborn ones who used to ignore the name of Jesus, who used to call his name as part of their profane talk, they are, they are going to reluctantly bow their knees. But after a while, the whole arena will be filled with every single human being kneeling because they have heard the name of Jesus. I've since revised that fantasy. I want to say that this is going on even now as we speak. Somewhere in this world, the name of Jesus is being used and knees are bowing and hearts are confessing that Jesus is Lord. Well, let us check it out some more. First of all, God did not just slap the name of Jesus onto his son just like that. The name was earned. 
Notice that the text starts off with the word therefore, which tells us that something preceded. Well, here's what happened. Jesus, who is the Son of God, was called the Word before he came to earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But then the Word became flesh, and so when that happened, Jesus, as a baby, was born to Mary, his mother, and she was told to give him the name Jesus because he shall save his people from their sin. Well, Jesus grew up, and for three and a half years he did his thing, performing miracles and addressing large crowds of people. But as his mission was coming to a close, we hear him talking to his disciples. He told them that when he's gone back to heaven, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Jesus was not being arrogant. Jesus was speaking truth. Later on, we see him praying in John chapter 17, and I want us to hear an extract from that prayer. Jesus said, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture would be fulfilled. That was not even subtle. Jesus confirmed that his father gave him a name, a name that spells power and protection. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me. What is that all about? You see, God had transferred power from himself to that name. That is why Jesus was able to say, all power is given unto me. And all this occurred between the Father and the Son because the Son uttered the biggest assignment ever when he came from heaven to earth to die for the redemption of humans. God is so pleased with his beloved son that it led him to give him his name, his powerful name, the name of Jesus. Oh, and don't worry that God is now a figurehead like God Emeritus, retired and just sitting around in heaven. No, the Father and the Son are one. They both are powerful. Anyway, the name of Jesus is what we're talking about, and my favorite disciple, Peter, proved the power of the text. This lame man was begging money outside the temple in Jerusalem, and he came up, and one day Peter and John, they came up, and when he begged them money, they simply had to tell him that they were broke. So Peter said to the guy who was 40 plus years old, and he was paralyzed from the day he was born, my friend, I don't have any money with me, but I'm going to give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. The man jumped to his feet and walked. He had never walked before. Several years later, this preacher guy in the Bible called Paul was doing some evangelism work in a city called Philippi. And there was this young lady who kept on following Paul and his team every day after day after day and kept on making sarcastic remarks about them that they are mighty men of God. Well, one day Paul had had enough of this girl. He knew something that many of the people did not know. Paul knew that it was an evil spirit in her that was making her say those things. So he turned to her and he spoke to the spirit inside of her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. The Bible says that at that moment, the spirit left her. You can find that account in Acts chapter 16. Satan is afraid of the name of Jesus, but be careful. Don't just go around babbling in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus lightly. You might regret doing that. 
One has to be sincere and intentional when you use the name of Jesus. God responds when you call on the name of Jesus and miracles happen, prayers are answered, demons run, all kinds of amazing things happen when we call the name of Jesus. This is why we are told not to use the name casually, in vain, not to use it without good intention, and certainly not as part of our profane talk. Use it when you pray. Use it when you're facing a problem. Use it when you're sick and need healing. Always use it with the conviction that there is power in the name of Jesus.